Good evening, everyone. I am Mrs. Lambe, and this week we are having our research session instead of our practical project session. And the reason for that switch is because next week you'll be doing your presentations. I hope that you're all doing well. Tonight we have three main objectives. The first is the discussion question and instructions. The second is the research project model and phase three. We discussed this in our Tuesday session, but tonight we're just um, going over a few points as a reminder. And then the third objective for tonight is just to check in with the groups and we'd like to use some of the time to work on actually developing your questionnaires in class. So I'm hoping that in doing this together, we can answer any questions you might have and eliminate any confusions. All right, so every chapter has some discussion questions. There are usually three to four of them. In Moodle, you'll be able to find your discussion questions under the chapter three object, under the chapter three learning activities. There are four questions there and I'm asking each group to get the responses to these. So at the end of your presentations on next week, I'll be asking you uh, one or two of these questions per group and expecting you to be able to respond. So prepare them as a part of your presentation and you will be asked to respond to any of these questions, all right? So let's shift gears and focus right on the research project. Your research project is the paper that you're writing in lieu of an exam. So instead of giving you an exam that you sit and you work on some questions within a, a period of time. Instead, what we've given you is a project that you are responsible for to a great extent. This project requires you to select an organization. You are assessing that organization to determine whether or not the information system being used is a successful one. And at the end of the course, we're expecting you to write a report which is going to be submitted, peer reviewed, and then published on our research page. What should you have done already? By now you should have identified an organization that has an information system that you can evaluate. Most of you have done this, so congratulations. Additionally, you should have approached an institution and asked them for permission to conduct a survey of the users of the information system. The third objective is that we are now modifying the DeLone and McLean information success measuring instrument, which is a survey, to reflect the information systems that they're evaluating. The fourth objective is that we expect you to collect more than 30 questionnaires and analyze the data. That is uh, if the organization has a larger number of employees. If they don't have that many employees, then you're allowed to assess 80% of the total number of staff members that the organization has. Finally, you'll be writing a research paper, updating that paper, peer review, having it peer reviewed, and then you'll present it at the end of the course. I've added some resources here and I'm going to share these slides with you uh, later on in the session. But in this resource set, I have some sample research papers, the research model paper, some research, the research slides that you've seen before, and of course the literature review guide. Let's look at one of the articles. This is taken from the Journal of MIS at UB. And I try to share with you papers that have been submitted by students. So more or less you have an idea of what was done and what you're working towards. This set of students are looking at the quality management system success model at the International Merchant Marine Registry of Belief. The authors, the abstract, the introduction, literature review, and now we are at the methodology. In this chapter, you will be speaking of the research model as well as hypotheses. 
on Tuesday, we looked at uh, the research model slide, but here they're just telling us what the research is intended to accomplish and how they're going to go ahead determining if this thing was successful or not. They go on to telling us about the Delona and McLean information system success model and its properties. So they break it down into the following. You have information quality, system quality, computer self-efficacy measure, service quality, and it continues up to perceived net benefit. It's going to check, are users satisfied? What is the, how can we rate the system quality? How can we rate the quality, the information quality? How can we rate the service quality and so on? You'll remember that one of the folders I asked you to create was one that compared different models. So you're probably wondering, okay, if, if you're going to tell us to use the Lone and McLean model, why did we have to look up these other models? Well, the reason for that is so that in the literature review, you can compare this model to others and then justify why the Delona and McLean is being used as opposed to another model. Let's use a random model like TAM. The Delona and McLean is specific to information system success. And so that's one of the factors right away that tells you that this is a better model to use than one of the others. Instead of the technology acceptance model or TAM, so it's because we're not looking at accepting the technology only, we're looking at the success of the system. This model would have been a better fit. All right. So when you get to the research methodology now, the method that you selected, which would have been the Delona and McLean, because that's what we're asking you to use, you tell us all about this model and the variables associated with it and how it can help us to determine the success of the system. We spoke about coming up with our hypotheses in our previous session. So I'm not going to delve much into that, but the explanation is the same. From the relationships that they were able to establish between the boxes that we see here, they came up with 12 hypotheses. All right. Then later on, they went to on to describing the research environment and the type of tool that was used. In this case, a questionnaire was used and they let us know how many of them were delivered, how many were returned, and they broke down their questions as follows. So remember in the diagram, you saw information quality, system quality, user satisfaction. All of these are parts of the Delona and McLean model. So from those, they were able to come up with questions for each of them. For information quality, they came up with several questions to assess the quality of the information. Is the quality infor, uh, management system, sorry, does the quality management system provide information that's exactly what you need? Uh, does it provide information that you need at the right time? Does it provide information that's relevant to your job? Uh, does it provide sufficient information? So they're checking how good is the information you're getting? They also check the quality of the system. And these are the questions they chose to use to determine how uh, successful that system's quality was. Is it easy to use? Is it user-friendly? Does it provide high-speed information access? Does it provide interactive features between the users and the system? And so on. And they did that for each of the categories. Let's look at the last one, perceived net benefits. Does it help you to improve your job performance? Does it help your organization to achieve its goal? Does it improve the assessment and training? Using the QMS, does it increase your productivity? Does it enhance recruitment and performance management? Does it help with organizational costs? So these are the categories that they use. And based on the feedback that they received, they were able to rate each of these categories to determine how successful the system is in the following areas. So if the system is lacking in one of these areas, your research will help this organization to improve. This is why your research is so important. And you can share the data with the organization after you have, you know, tabulated everything and you've 
completed your research, you can actually give them the, uh, a copy of your document so that they can benefit from it. After you've collected the data, um, after you've written up your methodology, the next chapter would be the data analysis. And this part is practically done for us because we're using the digital form. For each of those categories, notice you would have a data representation. So if, um, we have service quality, a histogram for user satisfaction, and the different areas, right? So this is basically what we will be creating in our time together. Now, most of these questions were given to you in one way or the other. The questions might have been worded a little differently than you see here, but the idea is that you are breaking up your, your survey into different areas. First, you have your demographics. You wanna find out how many males and how many females were interviewed. What were the age ranges? In this case, they also asked about the educational level of the participants, years of experience, and years working with the system. So you have the ability now to modify your questionnaire to include some of these factors if they were not included in the one that was initially shared. Then we go on to information quality. And notice the wording of the question might be a little different from the ones I read earlier. They did system quality as well, computer technology quality, and they're able to use a, a rating system. So participants can agree, disagree, strongly, dis strongly agree, strongly disagree. And of course, the third value or the middle value is going to be neutral. But from it, you're able to come up with your data. All right. Before I proceed, are there any questions? Okay. So the idea is to show you exactly what your final product would look like. Yours might not be exactly like this group's work, but um, it's just to give you an idea. Let me share this link with you so that you can have access to these as well. And in your groups, you can always go ahead and discuss the, quest the papers that are seen there. Okay, now we discussed this in our previous class. So I'm just reminding you that the model is what we use to establish our research. It's our framework. And from it, we can determine um, the end results. However, we need some hypotheses which will allow us to guide the research. And these will be either, either proven or disproven at the end of our research, okay? Phase three is where we're at in this research project. You've identified your organization, you're working on your literature review. It might not be complete, but you still have some time to complete it. And the research uh, phase three asks you to go out and collect data. You are being asked to create a Google form with a questionnaire based on the Delone and McLean model. The Delone and McLean model has all of these sections that we mentioned earlier. And we're asking you to put in the questions in your questionnaire. The reason why we're giving you the permission to recreate or create your own is because students were having problems when we gave you the questionnaire to copy. So to avoid that and to avoid any contaminated data, we're asking you to use the questions and create your own form. These will be sent to me first just to verify that you have the correct criteria and the questions are okay and then they will be sent back to you. Well, I'll just be giving you a go ahead and you can send it to the organization. On Moodle, I've added this link, this assignment link here, where you can just submit, one member of your group can submit the survey link there, or a Word document would be preferable so that I can just read through quickly and I can write comments on it. All right, so this is on Moodle and you can simply upload it there for me to view. That part, again, is not being graded at this time. It's just there for me. 
So it's right above references in the review section, in the practical section, sorry, unit three practical, just above your practical project number three, assignment submission link. All right, so at this time, uh, do you have any questions to ask me? And I'm going to start with group one. Let's hear from group number one. Okay, if you don't have questions, then I have questions for you, group one. Um, tell me what, you, what organization you've selected for your research project. Central Bank of Belize. Okay. Um, do you know what information system they're using? Okay. If you don't remember the name of the system, that's okay. But um, were you able to get a name of the system when you contacted them? Yes, miss, but I, I forget. Sorry. It's okay if you don't remember the name right now. So I just wanted to be sure that you at least got the name of it from them. You would have presented it in class, but I, I don't remember the name right now. So now that you have all of that, did you get permission from them to conduct a survey or an, a question to deliver questionnaires? All right, that's Keisha's group. Um, did you guys get permission? Yes, Miss, one of our group members, um, she's a close friend of the manager there. So we're working through her. Okay, all right. So that means that you shouldn't have any I'm hoping you won't have any obstacles in completing that part of it. Yes, Once you have the, the data collected, then we should be able to proceed. All right, thank you, group one. Group two, um, what organization did you select and did you get the name of their information system? Good night, Miss. Um, so the organization that we selected is McQuilling Partners. And um, we did get the name of the information system that they use. And we've already um, started with, we already have permission to do the survey as well. Okay, great, great. All right, so group three, same set of questions for you. Just checking in to see if you, uh, you have an organization, you know the name of their system, and you have permission to start re researching. Hi, Miss. Yes, um, we're doing um, Belize Bank, and their information system is the core banking system, which is um, Fusion, if, uh -huh, Fusion Banking. And then um, we already asked permission, and they said yes. Okay. It's looking good so far. Um, nobody seems to be telling you guys no, which is a good sign. All right, so that should mean that you won't have any delays in terms of getting your data because everything is hinged on the data right now. Okay, group four, what about you? Same questions. Group four is quiet tonight. What happened? All right, let's see who is in group four. Okay. 
Okay, Juana, Shanice, Anneli, or Shani. Any of you? I see Shanali is here. Just give us an update, Shanali. Hi, Miss. Good night. Um, sorry, Miss. I'm not feeling too well, but um, we are oh. gonna be working on um on the organization RFNG Life Insurance, Miss. Um, the system that they use is USSI. Which is um which stands for United Systems and Software Incorporation, and I have not yet um gotten permission from my manager, but more likely she will um accept for us to do a survey on on the company miss because um she basically had helped us with our um our project that we had from before. Okay, thank you, Shanley, and I hope you feel better soon. Thanks, miss. Yeah. All right. So it's it's sounding good. Usually, this is the part where it's easy, but it can be frustrating if you're not getting the data for you, the students, especially because um, it's it, this is where the research comes together. Chapter three or your methodology allows you to get the data, and then from there you can determine how successful the system is what needs to be improved, and you get to write about your recommendations for improvement in the fourth chapter, and in fact, the final chapter, rather. So as we continue to uh, look at these, we will get some ideas. And um, I'm going to allow you guys to work on your questionnaires. Now, these, these are the areas that you must have in your questionnaire. You must have the, the background, and the background is the demographics, right? Find out the, the sex of your, or the gender rather, of the population that you're interviewing. Find out the age cohort that they belong to, their educational level and work experience. Again, like I said, I shared a link to these slides with you, so you have access to all of these, right? And in addition to that, You'll be able to see, okay, just a minute. I'm not getting this out of the way. All right, I'm just gonna click on it again. Yes, you'll be able to get access to the resources that I shared in the slides when you click on the links. So these are the, the demographic components. The Delon and McLean model has information quality as one of the categories that it assesses. So you must have questions under that. You're free to use the questions that are here. Um, you're free to also modify them to the system that you're using, right? We have system quality being assessed, complementary technology quality. And these are some of the references that were used in terms of where we got the questions from. There's computer self-efficacy measure, there is service quality, user satisfaction, use, and perceived net benefits. Now, you would have noticed that these were additional um, boxes that were added to the, the Loon and McLean model when we compared the earlier two. However, they are crucial as we evaluate information systems. Also on the slide, you'll notice this was the purple triangle that I selected. The one beside it has another set of questions that you're, you're free to look at as well. This is a completed survey from one set of students. These students, however, were assessing the University of Belize learning management systems. Notice they did the background information, so they followed the template, and then they looked at the different categories. So we had information quality. They allowed participants to be able to rate the quality and they provided questions. They had system quality, com uh, complementary technology quality, service quality, user satisfaction, use perceived net benefits. So they kept it simple and they were able to evaluate. Now in the questions, you are not going to write Moodle because that's not the name of the information system, excuse me, that you're using. Each of you is using a different information system. 
So the correct name of the system is what you would replace these with. All right, does that make sense so far? Yes, miss. Okay, great. So these, um, these resources are on the slides and you can go ahead and click on them so that you're able to view them. So just a reminder, research phase three, this is what we're expecting. We're expecting you to create your own Google form with questions that have been edited from the list that we showed you. You must have the criteria that I, I mentioned a while ago. You must have your demographics and questions under each of those categories. If you're not sure how to make a Google form, um, I normally go to file. And then when I click on select the new tab, the new link rather, you're able to select form, right? And there you are given a blank form that you can go ahead and populate. You can put in the name of the form and then for description, I usually just put in a, a brief um, letter or, or memo as to what this is all about. Because here you just want to describe what you're doing for the users. So it's good to introduce yourself, say we're a group of uh, University of Belize students. We're doing a project uh, for a course called Management Information Systems. And we'd like your feedback as we evaluate this system that they are using, right? You can let them know that the data that they provide is not going to be anything that will harm the organization and it will remain with um, the university for the benefit of the organization. So just something to ease, that, ease their mind and let them know that we are not going to use their data for anything malicious and whatever you put in is going to go back to them at the end of the day for their benefit. Notice we don't ask them to input their names or phone numbers. So whatever they input is going to, whenever they participate, it's going to be confidential. And it allows them to have more peace of mind if they don't want anybody to know that they had to say certain things about the system, especially if what they had to say was not positive, right? It's a rating um, evaluation as well. So notice there are no open-ended questions in the, the questionnaire list. So again, they didn't really have to give their personal opinions. All right, so in each of those, you would be able to put in a question. Let's just put in the first one, we'll just put gender. Oops, all right, I'm gonna type gender. And of course, you get to choose the type of question. So, they can be either male or female. And so uh, the multiple choice would be a good option for that. And then of course, you can add other sections. Usually you can add more questions by clicking the plus sign. Sometimes the form will suggest the type of response it thinks you should have, but you can decide to change that. I'm just putting in some random values just for you to see it for right now. But I believe most, if not all of you, are familiar with Google Forms, but I wanted to share this just in case you weren't quite sure. All right. Usually up here, you'd put the title of your project. Um, or you try to get a simpler description. All right. So when you have come up with your question or the group leader, whoever decides in the group that they're going to create the form, you can ensure that you share it with your group members. And usually you'd go to um, send and then you can add an editor. So for instance, if we are in the same groups, all you would need to do is put in the username of the student 
or your group members, and then they would have access to this form as an editor. That means they could change the response. They could change the text that's there and add questions. You also have a response tab. So as soon as you start getting responses, you'll be able to view them here. And then later on, you can decide to download your responses as a CSV, which is a comma separated value. Or you can click on the little green icon here and it's going to put them in a spreadsheet for you. So those are some of the options that you have as you create your form. When you're ready to share it with participants, you can click on the little um, link icon to copy the link. I usually shorten the link and then copy it, or you could just send it to their email. So if you know the department head or whoever it is that you're sending it to, just put in the users email addresses and then it's going to send it to them all right any questions okay i'm taking the silence as con um to mean that you guys are understanding and i know some of you already had uh were familiar with this we're going to take the attendance at this time so when I call your name, kindly respond. Shanley? Present, Miss. Kilicha? Kilicha is absent. Shanice? Shanice isn't here either. Juana? Tiana? Here. Daniel? Okay, no, he's late. Vanetta? Here, Miss. Dominic? Oh, Vanetta is here. Dominic? Yes, please. Karen? Keisha? Here, Miss. Martha. Here, Miss. Shanika. Here, Miss. Zulmi. Here. Natasha. Here. Diona. You said my name is Diona? Yes. You're here. here. <laughs> Gabriel. Here, Miss. Starla. Here. Jalen. Here. And Annelie. All right. So, Jalen, you had a question for me earlier. I haven't had a chance to look at your questionnaire as yet. But what you can go ahead to, and do with your group is to compare it to the questions that were given tonight and see if you had questions for each of the categories, okay? That way we could tell how well your questionnaire evaluates the information system that the organization uses. All right? Yeah. So tonight, um, I wanted you to use the remainder of the time to meet with your groups and work on the questionnaire. And you have the option. You can either meet together in class and I put you in your groups, or you can choose to meet independently. No, I usually ask the groups because some groups prefer to meet independently so that they can, um, they have a little bit more freedom to discuss. Other groups prefer to meet 
um, where I put you in your groups and then you stay in class. What do you prefer? Independent mess. Okay. Anybody else? That's one group member, one group represented. Any other groups? There are four of you. Independent mess. Okay. Alone, independent ladies. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Independent. All right. So the independent ladies have it. Um, they have the majority vote. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this clarifies some of the questions you have. And um, if there's anything else that wasn't quite clear, you can always send me a, a message or an email. Um, as soon as I'm able to respond to you, I try to get back to you. All right. I'll see you guys on next week when we have our presentations. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.